God has been so good. something and laid it on my heart and, and I, I thought I was going to preach it this morning but you know God has different plans for us hallelujah I, I, you got your Bibles you can turn with me Ezekiel chapter 37 if you're Bible readers you know what I'm going to preach about and if you ain't a Bible reader then you don't know what I'm preaching about but you're going to know here just in a few minutes hallelujah but I, I was praying about this and I was studying and I was talking to God. And Brother Austin, if when the Lord speaks to you, that's when you need to listen. Right. And when God says to do something, that's when you have to do it. Uh, I heard a saying here a while back, says a little bit of duty, a little dab of duty. Well, there's a there's a thing out that says just a little a little bit of do you, a little bit of that do you, a little bit of this do you. But I found out just a little bit ain't going to work. Right. A little dab is not going to work. A little dose ain't going to work. No. Glory to God, you give a little kid just a little dose of medicine, it ain't going to make them no better. Amen. But if you give them what the, what the bottle directs them to take, it's going to help them. But if you just give them just a little bit, it's not going to help them. Same way with your blood pressure medicine. If you don't take it like you're supposed to, it ain't going to help you. And the Word of God will help you if you'll eat it. But just a little dab ain't going to help you. Brother Wayne, just a little nibble on it every once in a while is not going to help you. Brother Austin, just snipping on it every once in a while, wait three or four days, four or five days, and say, well, I'm just going to nip just a little bit. I'm just going to read just a couple of scriptures and then I'm going to close my Bible. That's not going to help you. Hallelujah. But the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, it said, And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of, and the, of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round and about. And behold, there was very many in the open valley. And lo, there were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Number four. And again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will, slay, and I will lay sweat sinew upon you, and I will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and shall and ye shall live right. and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. So prophesy as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when he beheld lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them and above and above but there was no breath in them. I want y'all to listen to that. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the winds. Prophesy, son of man, and say, the wind, thus, thus saith the Lord God, come from four winds 
of breath. Oh, breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceedingly great army. Listen to verse number 9. Verse number 8. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, and above, but there was no breath in them. Heavenly Father God, as I come to you once again, Heavenly Father God, to be able to preach what thus saith the word of the Lord. God, I pray God to take a call the altar and perch my lips. Then I'll be able to say what does say the word. God, I pray you give me out of the way and let the Holy Ghost come in. And let the Holy Ghost be the preacher. And let him be the guider tonight, God. I pray, God, you hide me behind the shadow of the cross. That the world won't see me, but they'll see Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I ask you right now, God, that you open the ears and let them hear what the Spirit was saying to the church tonight. Heavenly Father, God, I give you praise. And I give you all the glory and all the honor. And the church would say amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. I was reading this, Brother Wayne. And this is what God laid on my heart. It's been preached many ways. Oh, I've heard it preached this way. I've heard it preached on the dry bones. I've heard it preached on this. Well, this is a new one to you. Hallelujah. In verse number 77, and so I prophesied as I was commanded. And I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. But verse number 8 said, and when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and their skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And verse number 9 said, Then say he unto me, Prophesy unto the winds. And prophesy, son of man, and I say to the winds, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon thee, slain, and they shall live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them. They lived and stood upon their feet as seeming army. Hallelujah. Verse 14 it says, And he shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and professed it, performed it, saith the Lord. Glory to God, as I was reading this, Brother Wayne, it stuck out to me in verse number 8. And when I beheld low, he didn't say high, he said low. When I beheld low, the sin you and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Glory to God, and God spoke to my heart. Brother Wayne, just like I'm speaking to y'all tonight. Glory to God, the church world has got the bones. The church world has got the Spirit of God. The church, I'm talking about the church that's made herself ready, has got the Spirit of God in them. But there's some, glory to God, that ain't even got breath in them. They'll come and blow through the motions. They'll come and go through the singing. They'll come
They're waiting on a move, Sister Kathy, and they can't get a move. Yep. Why? Because they done sit so long and got complacent. Right. Glory to God. But Jesus said, I'm coming back after a church that's made their self pity. Come glory to God. I want to tell you tonight, too many people, glory to God, they go through the motion. They go through the phase. They go through and come up. They know what they want to do. They got it programmed. This is going to do this. And that is going to do this. Sister so-and-so is going to testify for about three minutes. And brother so-and-so is going to sing Amazing Grace. And the pastor is going to get up and give you a little sermon. And let you go home. Glory to God. The breath of God is not breathing in them. The spirit of God is not upon them. Glory to God. He said come alive. Come alive. It's saying, come alive. Right. Get on fire. Amen. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. Hallelujah. You better be ready. Right. You better be ready. Amen. Glory to God. Elijah here. Oh, Ezekiel here. Glory to God. He done what God told him to do. Right. He went right down in the midst of them bones. Yeah. Glory to God, just like we do, Amen. Sister Kathy. We got us preachers that's got to sit right down in the midst of them dry bones. And we got to try to preach the word of God. Glory to God and people sitting back. Glory to God putting the shields up against us. Glory to God they're putting the walls up against us. And we try to preach the word of God. And they'll say, move me preacher if you can. If you can't just sit down and shut up. seen it this way before. God give it to me this way, Brother yeah, Wayne. Too many people. Yeah. Brother Austin, too many preachers has give up. Uh -huh. Too many pastors has give up. Yeah, right. Lord. Too many pastors has sat down and said, I can't do it no more. Yeah, well, congregation is small. People just won't come. You try and you try. And they just won't come. Well, I'm just going to give up. And I'm just going to lay down and I'm going to quit. And they're stuck in that valley. Amen. Glory to God. And the devil's sapping their victory. Every time they say, I can't make it. The devil's taking their victory. Every time they say, I might as well just give up. The devil's sapping that victory a little bit more. And all of a sudden, they become dry. And they become complacent. Glory to God. They become fish for a bait. Catch me a little bit of bluegill. Brother Don, I take just a little bit of that worm and put it on that hook just enough to hide the point of that hook to catch him a little bluegill. Brother Josh, and I sit there and I play with that little bluegill. Before I know it, that little bluegill that makes that little nub off of there. And I put a little bit more on there and he'll come right back at it because that little dad just didn't do him. But a lot of Christian thinks just a little dad is all I gotta have. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of church world thinks just a little bit is all I gotta have. Yeah. Uh, all I gotta do is just go get saved and that's it. I'm done. Yeah. I don't have to do nothing else as long as I'm saved. My name's written in the book, man's book of life. I don't have to do nothing else. Uh, glory to God, I don't have to try to get closer to God. I don't have to try to pray. I don't have to pray. I don't have to Lord, 
my little dad ain't going to do you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Hallelujah. We got some people that'll take this Bible and they'll go through here. Let me see here. Yeah. Right here. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that verse right there, I believe, might help me. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Galileans. Well, I don't know what that means, but I think that little verse will do me the rest of the week. I'll just take that little verse and stay with you. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's go over here, he says. In Acts chapter 9, uh, 13, 39. And by him all that believe are justified. And from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Well, now, I'll just take that little verse and I'll live by that little verse. That'll get me by the next week. Oh, but I'm telling you what, dibbles and dabbles ain't going to help you. Glory to God, if you don't get hungry, you want to I'm going to eat something, but I want something on my plate. I want some food on my plate. Glory to God, when I sit down to read the Word of God, I want something out of it. I just don't want a little nibble. I just don't want a little dab. Glory to God. I want something that's going to get me out of the valley of the dry bones. going to get me through from the night to Thursday night. Amen. Yeah. I want something that's going to get me from Thursday night to Sunday morning. Yeah. Now, then I want something from Sunday morning that's going to get me through to Sunday night. Glory yeah. to God, this little pot ain't going to help. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God, this little pot ain't going to help. Yeah. Glory to God, he won't get you through the whole week. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Oh yes, Brother Miller, it will. That's when the tempter comes. That's right. Do this. Do that. You wonder why. You wonder why. You say, Brother Miller, you're going to call some people to get aggravated to you. I can't help it. God spoke to my spirit today. Said, a little dad's not going to do you. What's that saying? Dip de do. Just a little dad would do you. Josh, your hair is so stiff. If, if a porcupine look like on your head, but that little dad's not going to do it. You had to put a lot more on it to get it that way, didn't you? Gordy got one little squirt of hairspray ain't going to keep your hair from staying flying away, Sister Misty. Gordy God, you got to put a whole lot on there to keep it where it stays. That's the same way with the Word of God. If you want to get it in the dry places, if you want to get it in the places that the devil's trying to put you in, you got to get a whole lot more. The word of God. You gotta study this word. The Bible says, "Study, study this word." Sister Johnny preached the other night. Write it on the tablets of your heart. Write it on the tablets of your heart. Oh, Brother Miller, I ain't never heard it preached this way. I ain't neither. Hallelujah. Let's go over here now. Oh yeah, this little scripture right here will help me. The Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, glory to God. Oh yeah, that verse will help me. Amen. Yep. Oh yeah, that verse is going to get me through, Brother Mike. That'll get me through a couple of weeks. Then I'll go back to church. Uh, can I tell you, the Bible says, go. Start reading this word of God. Oh yeah, your spirit might be weak. 
Oh yeah, you might wonder why. But boy, when you start reading this word of God, there's something inside of you begins to turn. There's something inside of you yeah, begins God. to move. Glory to God, the Spirit of God begins to move inside of you, Brother Wayne. And when the Spirit of God begins to move, glory to God, there's something inside of you begins to turn. Like a wheel in a wheel, glory to God. There's something inside of you will begin to set you on fire when you begin to read the word of God. But churches nowadays, they don't preach the congregation to read the Word of God. They got screens up on the TV now. They put their Bible verses up on the screens. Oh, you don't bring your Bible to church no more. No, you don't have to bring your Bible to church. We, we'll put it up on the screen for you. What's wrong with carrying your Bible? What's wrong with having your Bible with you? What's wrong? You wonder why America's in the shape they're in? It's because the Christians has got so yellow back. They've got so scared they won't even pack the Word of God into the church anymore. Glory to God, they bring their little tablets in it. They bring their little iPods in it. Their little iPads. And they read the Word of God off the iPads. But glory to God, I want my Bible. I want the Word of God right here in front of me. But sometimes them iPads can make a mistake. Sometimes they put Bible verses up on there that's not what it's supposed to be. Amen. Uh, Making the church just like a home. Plays movies in front of the church. They'll play a movie in front of the church. They'll just open up the screen. Hey, we're going to have a movie night here at the church. And we're going to play a movie. We're going to watch a movie. That's what fellowship halls are for. Amen. This place here is the power of God. This is God's anointed place. This is His temple. Amen. This is God's temple. They bring food in the church. They bring drinks in the church. God spoke to my spirit this morning. said it can't happen. Cannot happen. Cannot happen. He said I ran them out of the temple once. I read aloud. He said, judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if judgment can't begin at the house of God, then where is it going to begin at? Glory to God, I'm sick. And I'm part of the church. Lord is getting up. They got coffee shops in the church. They got donut shops in the church. Glory to God, and they'll sit in the church. Drink their little coffee and eat their donuts. Dry bones in the valley. 
Wake and you shall live. Huh? Huh? That's another message. Hallelujah. But God spoke it into my spirit. Verse number 8. Verse number 8. Brother Wayne, people cannot live unless that breath of God is breathed upon them. They cannot worship Him unless the breath of God has breathed upon them. You seen what God done this morning? It wasn't what I done. Wasn't nothing that I done this morning. It was the breath of God that came in and breathed. Amen. Jesus spoke to me. I was going to sing a different song. And Jesus spoke to me and said, I want to walk around on this morning. I want to walk around on this morning. I thought, Lord, I ain't never just sang it. Walk around with Jesus. And he just come in. And he began to walk around. Yes. How oh, was he God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The breath of God breathed upon you this morning. The breath of God came in this morning, Brother Austin. When the power of God knocked you off your feet before you can even lay hands on them, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. They said that I smacked Cassie on top of the head. I don't even remember even touching her. All I know is I was just praying for people that God showed me to pray for. I don't. I remember I was praying for Michael's the last thing I remember. I was praying for Michael. And next thing I know, it was just boom, boom. People falling out the floor. The Lord said, Bonnie shouting like a bunny. Well, it is Easter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But does the breath of God breathe upon you this morning? The breath of God came in this morning. Why? Because we allowed Him to come in. But other churches, no, they just want to go through the motion. They just want to go through the form and the fashion. Sow that thousand dollars and thirty-three. One thousand dollars and one thousand thirty-three dollars into this ministry. You sow this seed. Brother Austin, I have never planted a dollar and it come up another dollar. I ain't never planted a tin in the garden, Brother Wayne, and it come up with all kinds of tins on the tree. Have you, Brother Dollar? I ain't never planted a hundred dollar bill, Daniel, down in the ground. And he come up 
a big old bushel like a big old thing of tomatoes and it'd be a hundred dollar bills all over that bank. God can do it. But God said the seed was the word. Amen. He didn't say so the woman. He said so the word. He said so the seed. I'm so the seed of life. I'm telling you, if you want to get out of your dry spots, you better begin to call out upon God. If you want to get where you want to be with God, you better begin to call out upon God. If the churches want to come alive, Lord to God, they better get out of the dry places. Oh, now, Brother Miller, you just made us mad. You just talked about our preachers on live stream. Oh, bless your heart. What I'm going to get on there and say, we're going to talk today about the trees outside. All them trees are so pretty. The flowers is blue. The grass is so green. Oh, can't you see God everywhere? God is love. He's love. All we got to do is just love God. Love Him here and love Him there. Oh, that's all you have to do. It don't matter what kind of lifestyle you live. It don't matter if you're a homosexual. It don't matter. Just, just, just love. Just show love. Just show happiness. Just smile and laugh. Everything will be okay. Drier, drier than shucks. You ever been in a cornfield in the fall of the year and it's so dry? Glory to God, and the winds are blowing you here, going, just rustling. That's how dry those churches have got. That's how dry, Brother Michael, that they have got. And God said, I can't work in a place like that. I can't move in a place like that because He said, I am a God of the Spirit. He said, without the Spirit of God, Without the Spirit, we can't do nothing. Without the anointing of God, Father, we can't do nothing. Without the power of God, I can't heal nobody. Without Jesus Christ in the midst, I can't touch nobody. Without the Spirit of God moving in the church, we wouldn't have seen what went on this morning. Glory to God, we wouldn't have seen Jesus come walking around. Glory to God, every preacher gets up and they stand up and tell the congregation, you got to live right. you got to live right. And the congregation will sit back and look at you like this. Tell me it again, preacher. People shacking up with one another. People living with one another thinking it's okay. And it's a sin. Sin. People committing adultery. In the churches, committing adultery in churches. We'll put it in that dry spot. We'll hide it in the dry spot. Let it go. Just let it go. But you know what? There's coming a day that judgment's going to fall on the house of God. Amen. There's coming a day that judgment's going to fall on the house of God. Judgment's going to fall. And what you got swept under the rug. What you got swept under the carpet. Oh, God's fixing to bring it out. He said, what's covered shall be uncovered. Glory to God. It don't matter. Glory to God. You watch the news. CNN loves to try to find something on Donald Trump every day. Every day. They try to bring out this and try to bring out that. All they want to bring out is the old past. They want to bring out his old lovers. Lord, you got, they want to try to bring that up thinking that's going to cause something to happen. Can I tell you what it's causing? It's causing people to wake up and realize they're tired of what the government's trying to do. They're tired of what they're trying to do. It's time the church wakes up and say, I'm tired of what the devil's trying to do. It's time the pastors wake up and start preaching it right down the middle. Start telling the church that you got to live right I'm going to stand before God for this church. Amen. I'm going to stand before God for this church. Amen. Not you, but me. Amen. 
And what I let go on in this church is what I'm going to stand before God for. Amen. I told y'all from the beginning that I'm the tail mm -hmm. and God is the head. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Brother Wayne and Sister Connie is the assistant pastor. Glory to God. They're the ones that takes care of it after I'm not, when I'm not here, they're the ones that's going to step up. The night that I can't be here, they're going to be the ones that's going to step up. They're the ones that's going to take over. Would be and Lord has to go somewhere. They're the ones that's going to have to step up. Glory to God. And I know that they're going to tell you the same thing that I'll tell you. They'll preach it right straight down the line. Glory to God. We want to make care of our home. And we want the church to make it. Glory to God. He said then I said unto thee, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Brother Don, I believe God is fixing to prophesy to the winds. Just give us an example right there in Ezekiel's what he done. But I believe he's fixing to stand up. And somebody is going to prophesy to the four winds. And the four winds are going to start blowing. Brother Wayne, as I said earlier, and when them four winds begin to start blowing, all these dead churches, all these churches that's been dead for years, Sister Kathy, they're going to either come alive or they're going to be dead. They're going to be buried. Glory to God, but he's going to prophesy to those winds, and then winds are going to come together. And the church is going to come alive. Revival is going to break out. Glory to God, and the floodgates of heaven are going to open up. And the Spirit of God is going to begin to rain down. And the Lord will see. And the Spirit of God is going to rain. The rain is going to begin to fall. Glory to God, and the noise. church 
He's not coming back after a dead church. He said, I'm coming back after a church that's alive. A church that's made herself ready. A church without spot. Without a donut. A church without a coffee. A church without a Coke. A church without a, a sandwich in the church. He said, I'm coming back after a church that's made their self ready. He said, I'm coming back after one without a spot, without a wrinkle, without a blemish. Oh, glory to God in your garment. Glory to God, you I was taking a seat while ago. Brother Austin, there was a little blemish on that sheet. I could just barely see it, Brother Wayne. But God's big eyes are going to see that. Oh, glory to God, you can have one little speck. You wouldn't be able to see it. But God said, I will see that spot. Yeah. And you ain't going to make it. Oh. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Brother Austin, like I said a while ago, form of godliness, but now the power thereof, they got cloned. The sinew came upon them. Brother Wayne, the skin came upon them. And upon their flesh, he covered them. But the breath of God was not in them. They was not breathing. Until Elijah prophesied unto the winds. Ezekiel. And Ezekiel prophesied to the winds. And those winds began to blow. And the Bible said that breath began to come in there. And the Bible said they stood up as a great and mighty army. Brother Wayne, I ain't no Bible scholar, but just something the Holy Ghost just put in my spirit. He said, and he sat down in the midst of a valley of dry bones. They were many, many. I believe all of those old Israelites that was killed in the army are all laying dead. All them bones are still there. And I believe, like I said, I'm not no Bible scholar. This is just what I believe myself. I believe that when that wind begins to blow, them bones, the sinew is going to come upon them. The flesh is going to come upon them bones. Sister Kathy. And the skin is going to cover them. And when that wind begins to blow, that breath of God's going to breathe in them. Amen. They once was an army. But God said they're going to be a mightier army, a great army. And they're going to stand back up. They're going to stand back up. And they're going to fight against the enemy. An army that cannot be destroyed army that cannot be wiped out. And they're not going to be zombies. They're going to be alive. Amen. They're going to have the breath of God breathe back in them. And they're going, hey, how do you think you got here? What did he say? Caleb, what did he say? He said he formed you out of the dust of the earth. He made you. Then he said he breathed the breath of life into you. And what happened? You came alive. You came alive. And that's what he's fixing to do right here. I honestly believe he's fixing to speak. And this mighty army is going to rise up and the world has never seen an army like this before. God said my people. My people is a chosen people. Israel is a chosen people. A chosen generation. Back generations and generations back, brother Donald. But Don, he's going to raise them up. He's going to raise that army up. He said many, many, many bones. He didn't say just few. He said many bones. 
He said right here in verse 1, he said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them around and about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, there were they were very dry. Very many. And I believe that the church, the breath of God is fixing to breathe upon the church. And the church better be ready to accept that breath. Amen. If they want to rise up and be the army for God, they better rise up. I, I'm talking about the church world now. I'm talking about the church world. When that revival begins to break, it's going to be better than that Azuzu Street Revival. Azuzu Street Revival was a good revival. Many souls were saved. Many people was touched. Many lives was changed. But we ain't seen nothing than what we're going to see next. Like I said, I believe we're going to see hands grow out. We're going to see feet grow. We're going to see arms grow. We're going to see eyes open. We're going to see deaf ears open. We're going to see the lame walk, the dumb talk. We're going to see it, Brother Austin, because the Bible said, greater work shall you do because I go to the Father. But when that revival breaks out, oh, I heard somebody say well, the other day, all the revivals done broke out. No, it ain't. Mm -mm. The Bible said when the Word, the Word has been preached to all nations. He said the Word. He didn't say the seed. He didn't say the money. He said the Word. He said Jesus Christ has been preached to all nations. Then shall the end come. The Word is not being preached to all the nations. Not the word. A word, but not the word. And when this word goes out to all the nations, then time shall be no more. She gets a song. You say, Brother Miller? How is this going to be? Well, like I said, and shall put my spirit in you. He said, I, and I shall put my spirit in you. He didn't say on you, he said in you. And he shall live. And he shall eat it.
we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised us to the who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver in whom he trusted.